The disease is called epidermolysis bullosa, and that's a term used to say that the skin is basically full, pulling apart and forming a blister. Tell me what these kids go through on a daily basis. These kids have a terrible time each day. Uh, what you and I might think of taking a shower or a bath, it takes them four hours of pain and suffering to change their dressings. Uh, they don't understand that the, the pain that they're suffering to change their dressings may help prevent them from developing infection. So these kids have a very difficult time. What are some of the um, long-term medical complications that are so life-limiting for these kids? What happens is these children develop large wounds and the body spends so much energy trying to repair these wounds that it can't do some of the other things it needs to do like grow and so these kids are small, they develop scars, they develop infections, they have malnutrition because they can't eat and it's a severe chronic disease but there are other severe chronic diseases but the problem with this one is these children suffer severe pain associated with it. What are the current treatments for it? Okay, the current treatments today are the same treatments that were used 20 years ago or 30 years ago. We use wound dressings. We try to prevent infection. Our wound dressings are a little bit better. Our antibiotics and methods of preventing infection may be a little bit better, but there's not much improvement in the life and the daily activity of these patients today than it was 20 years ago when we at Stanford started to focus on this disease. Tell me a little bit about Garrett, the patient we saw today. Garrett is a patient we've taken care of since he was an infant. I took care of him when he was flown in uh, the day he was born. Uh, he is a child who has been through a lot. He has a, a very severe form of a very severe disease, but he is a trooper. He and his family have pulled together, their whole community has pulled together, and they basically have a village that's helping to help this child survive. So what sort of hope is there out there for all the suffering these kids go through? These children suffer every day, and the only way that I know of that we can decrease their suffering is through research. And that's a focus we've had. Our focus is trying to find a better way to repair the skin. So in our department, we're focused on developing what's called gene therapy. The idea we have is take these patients who don't have the correct genetics to make the right proteins that holds the skin together and take these patients and give them the correct genetics to put in the correct gene so they can make the right protein and repair their own skin. That's what we're trying to do. In gene therapy, uh, where are we? How close are we to having gene therapy available for these kids? Gene therapy has been a buzzword and a focus for many, many years for many programs. But we are now preparing to go to the Federal Drug Administration to get approval to begin a gene therapy program for recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa. That's the type of disease that Garrett has. What we hope to do is take the patient's cells, correct them in a tissue culture dish, and then transplant them back onto the patient as if we were treating a burn. We will then be able to see if they are making the correct proteins and if the skin sticks together. If we have some initial success with adults, then we'll be able to start to move down to children. And this is where we want to go. We want to get to the children as fast as we can. It's been in a mouse model before. Yes, we're able to take human skin and grow it on a mouse. We're able to take recessive dystrophic EB skin correct it and grow it so it looks like normal skin on a mouse. This is part of the model we're working with. If gene therapy, um, which obviously holds important promise for these kids and so forth, um, if it's approved there could be clinical trials on the way with adults and then with kids on the horizon. Yes, the FDA re rules are very strong to protect children's rights. So the studies we'll be doing are something that's never been done before. So you want to protect the rights of the child. So you have a, if you have adults who have that disease, and we do, and we're caring for adults that have this disease, they'll be the first subjects who will be involved in our trial. And then if we're successful with the adults, very quickly we'll try to move down to younger and younger children to try to prevent some of the pain and the suffering and to stop the wounds that never heal. Can you tell, tell us a little bit about why it's important that we have an entire clinic associated 
to combating or treating or helping support the families of this versus the family just coming in as an outpatient. What does it mean that you have a clinic that's focused on this disease? The reason why we've developed the epidermolysis bullosa clinic is because this disease is very complex. These patients have nutritional problems, they have social problems, they have major medical problems in anemia and other diseases. And so if we're able to bring the doctor to the patient, it saves them the time and effort to go from clinic to clinic from day to day. They don't have to get in the car as much. They don't have to traumatize their wounds by moving around as much. And the other thing is the patients realize that we care, that there's a community, there's a village, there's a place that has a major interest in their needs. Uh, our social workers, our nurses, all those people show that we care and that's very important to these patients. And in the background, they know that this is our research focus and so we have hope for the future. And finally, uh, what can a regular person watching this program, what can they do to help impact this terrible disease? The only way that I know of that we can decrease the pain that these children suffer is through research. Either giving directly to research focused on epidermolysis bullosa or pushing pressure on the legislative body to support the National Institute of Health. The National Institute of Health has a major focus on helping some of these orphan and unusual diseases. So either local support for research or national support, this is how we're going to combat this disease.